Okay, uh, Jai Jinendra everyone uh, and Namaste. My name is Professor Atul Shah. Uh, we are continuing our uh, history project uh, about charting the migration history of the Jain community uh, to the United Kingdom from various parts of the world. And today we are very, very delighted and honored to feature the late uh, Kusum Ben Shah MBE uh, and her cultural legacy. And uh, she has been a pioneer in so many ways. Um, but what we're going to do is to remember her through the students who were children at the time and who learned from her uh, and who are alive today doing some wonderful things. There are many of them are members, they're doctors, dentists, uh, teachers, accountants, etc. So they're already transforming society and life in many different ways. And we're going to go back into memory lane with them, with them, uh, including some of the teachers she worked with uh, to find out more about her life and how she touched them. And then later on, we will go into more detail about where she was born, how she came to the UK, what gave her the MBE uh, and uh, uh, you know, build on the, the life story. Uh, many of you listening may already know her or have been touched by her or those who will come to watch this video will be. So uh, let's, let's start. And the first thing I think that uh, everyone remembers about her is that she was a great teacher, right? And in particular, two, two main subjects, Gujarati, the language of Gujarati and Jainism. You know? And she was a teacher of both Gujarati and Jainism. So, uh, Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear your real experiences of our beloved uh, Kusum Ben Shah and her life legacy. Who would like to start? Kinari, why don't you get us started? Kinari is a teacher and she's really been helpful in setting this up. So how did she influence you, Kinari? So um, I'm a teacher at the moment um, by profession, a secondary school teacher. Um, and some of the practice that I do today um, really ref reflects the way Kusum Ben taught. And um, from what I remember, um, I did A-level Gujarati um, and just in her class, it wasn't ever um, learning by the textbook or just learning vocabulary or learning the grammar there was so much more in the lesson. Every time we came across a new term, she would give us a history of that term or talk about how it plays a part in religion or how there was a play about it. Um, she had so much more than just teaching us um, the, the key knowledge we needed to know. There was culture involved. Um, it, was, it was just, it was such a, a uh, broad experience we gained from doing that A-level Gujarati with her. Very good. I mean, in a way, you, you're following her footsteps, right? You've become a professional school teacher. So, um, yeah. yeah. Deepa, you were saying earlier about how she transformed your life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember um, how much she touched me as a teacher, all the Gujarati that um, I learned um, more than all the um, reading, writing, and the actual language itself, I felt that she taught me so much about how to behave as a person. Um, so she taught, taught us through her behavior and what values to have. Um, and I was one of the first to uh, do A-level Gujarati, and I remember we had quite a small class. Um, so just as you know, I touched upon um, every aspect of what she was teaching us, she'd tell us the background or the culture and I feel I learned so much more about our ancestry, heritage, and, and the values and why we do things today. Um, she taught us the background behind it. Um, and as I said, um, it's her behavior and mannerisms um, that I, I, I try to adopt today in my um, daily life. So. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, like you, uh, some, men, some of you actually went on to do A-level Gujarati. Uh, uh, who, who, would somebody like to talk about how you took Gujarati to A-level? 
Anybody else who studied Gujarati? You did, Deepa, didn't you? Uh, I studied for A level. Um, uh, I was one of the, I think we were the first to meet myself, Rishi, um, and um, some others. And um, it was a small class, I think, of six who were the first to do A level Gujarati. And um, there's a big jump in the literature and um, the complexity of the language and that you learn at A level. But again, um, not just the language and the literal grammar and all of that that we're learning, it was more um, our Gujarati culture that was taught at A level, I felt. So, um, and we had um, those Saturday um, afternoons learning Gujarati, they were some of the most enjoyable Saturday afternoons of my childhood, as Rishi touched um, earlier. Uh, the classes were full of laughter and she always made teaching and learning so, so enjoyable. And that's how I try to do with my children today. So she made it, you never felt that you were in a class and there was, you know, despite all the structure, she made it so much fun that, you know, it was something you look forward to all week. You know? yeah. It really was the highlight of the week. I felt like mainstream school was like the sideline of life and the fact we lived for the Saturday. Uh, I don't know if I you agree with that, and Raki, I, I know definitely that's how it felt for me, for sure. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, you're a dentist now, and you, you know your whole, and you still remember, and your mother, everyone remembers Kailash Ben, you know, as a great teacher like Kusum Ben. She's sitting next to you, uh, Kailash Ben. Tell us, I mean, how, what what was it like working with Kusum Ben? It was just amazing. I, uh, in one word, I can say amazing. She had so much. She could, um, she could, she was calm at the same time, you know, she could handle so many things to, um, by herself, you know. At one point, we had nearly about 200 and more than 250 students in the school. Um, mm -hmm. She was a head teacher plus running a class as well. Uh, a GCSE class with about 35 children. So she used to manage her own class plus the school. And still she always managed to be calm, training the teachers, you know, helping all the other teachers as well with their class. So she was always on the go. Um, just amazing personality. Wow. And we haven't really even touched on other aspects of life. Like she was she was working full time. She was a mother. Uh, you know, uh, we haven't even talked about her family life. And it was as if she was like a swan. You know, she, she was gliding on the surface, but underneath she was pedaling very hard. And, you know, all the young people here today, they only saw the surface, the, 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 the warm heart, the kindness. But underneath there was a lot of hard work and dedication. Uh, Kailash, when you said, I mean, she, so, so you, you probably learned about teaching through her, right? You didn't know about teaching before that. When I joined, I joined the school about 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I really just didn't want to join. She, she was persuading me, but I said, no, I don't really have the capacity or I, I don't have any training or anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, she, sort of told me that, you know, we really need some help and we can't find anyone. And that is how she persuaded me. And 30 years old, I'm still at the school. <laughs> uh, I don't know how 30 years have gone. 30 years. Yes. Wow. She is very much alive. I mean, when I look at, listen to you, she is here with us. I mean, Neva, you had a lovely story about how she helped you with your career choice. Hi, Afai. Yeah, um, so again, I was uh, one of the very um, lucky people who have been touched by her as well. Um, I spent a lot of time with her through Gujarati school, Jane class. Um, she taught me A-level Gujarati as well, and also did some dance drama shows, um, Rup Gosha and Shali Padra, which a lot of the other students took part in as well. Um, and I think Gosun Ben, for me, she, she was a teacher, she, she was a mentor, but she was also someone who became your friend. Um, spending a lot of time with her, she, she really got to know you as a person. And I remember for me, when, I was, when she was teaching me A-level Gujaratis, and I was at my time when I was applying for university, 
and I was talking to her about my options and she she said to me and I was discussing a few options because I was really stuck between a few different career choices and she said to me one day she was like I think you should do something where you can help people because that's your nature and that's something that you would really flourish in and it really took me back because it was then when I kind of realized that she knows you really well she doesn't just teach you as a student she teaches you as a friend she gets to know you and um she kind of instills values and cult and the culture in you that kind of progress you into the person you are today and and I think that's something that we can never forget um and something that I will always cherish as well for a very long time and definitely practice the values and everything that she has taught us from a very young age yeah i mean uh, we were talking earlier neva that when you go to university to study medicine or dentistry the university can never teach you how to be caring and how to be kind you know uh, but in a sense what this school achieved was to teach you all of that you know to teach you how to be kind to 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 give you that pride in your culture language your identity your religion and also have fun i mean rishi talked about fun right i mean children are very playful you know and if you make something very serious then they'll kind of run a mile away but but that idea of creating that fun but at the same time uh, creating that positivity and giving you that self confidence i mean all of you you look so confident today and that self confidence comes from that sense of identity uh, but caring i mean i can just imagine neva what you would be like with your patients you know mm-hmm. i can just imagine i know you will be very modest on this on the screen but uh, you know i can imagine your patients uh, referring you every telling their relatives you know you must go to neva she's the best dentist you know i've heard stories like that so, no, so she... wow i mean uh, rakhi do you want to tell us about your story come on okay <laughs> Hi so I was always very shy and quiet um but she was very encouraging from the start um and um yeah she taught me how to work hard um she was she, you could see from her like she was always working hard with her family her work gujarati school jain classes she was on till 10 o'clock 11 o'clock every evening sometimes you know doing the up and down to cambridge um so yeah I learned a lot from her that's you know you can always do something oh she came all the way to cambridge to teach you oh no not to teach me <laughs> with all oh. the um J- with all the gujarati exams um oh, okay. she did the up and down then as well yeah i mean yeah. that that's another thing that she did which is to get gujarati officially certified as a gcse and then an a level so you know she got it into the national if you like the national curriculum so that you know people anywhere in the country could actually do the gujarati language for the gcse so that's a much much wider footprint than actually just the school that uh, you had in uh, in in croydon you know so that was fantastic um let's see come on bring me stories i i wasn't her student uh, you know i knew her actually we started a gujarati school in colchester because of her inspiration so i mean that's another example when i moved here you know that's one of the first things i did and my children were young at that time and she encouraged supported and she was always at the other end of the phone so there are so many aspects of her life which are not even known by many people how she touched you know but you must have your own story bavisha what's your story come on hi um i i was like quite a difficult child I was really naughty when I was younger and um Christina never discriminated against anyone she do she wouldn't give up for me and she like taught me to be so hard working and um, to be so kind and um she's encouraged me so much I found Gujarati really difficult um I'd always struggled but because of her and geography but I've like come so far I managed to get an A in GCSE oh and, um, yes. it all came down to all of our hard work yes uh, i i remember geography ben as well so like kailash ben geography ben 
Jyotsnaben. She created another army of uh, teachers as well. You know, she built uh, alongside the, the kind of, you know, direct teaching with you, young people. She also built an army around her, right? And these are all soldiers of peace. Huh? These are not soldiers of war, but peace, compassion, kindness, almost like farmers, you know, they were, they were farming seeds into your lives, which you are now carrying forward uh, to others. What do you do, Bhavisha? How do you live her values today? Um, I'm, right now, I'm just I'm studying to do my actuarial exams. Um, that's the career I want to pursue. And I've been uh, working at a charity for RNIB, which is the Royal National Institute for the Blind. And I, um, because of her, it really helps me like taking care of people and doing good. So, yeah. Incredible, incredible. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's have some more stories. Come on, who would like to go next? I know you're all keen to join and to share your stories. So please speak up. I'll jump in. Um, so uh, I'm not sure if uh, people remember me. Uh, Ashish. So my mum is Jaroben. I think she might be on the on the call. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but I think there's another aspect to Gusumben that I, I was really lucky. Um, we were actually neighbours, so she, she only lived a few doors away from us. And I think there's a, a huge aspect, as you said earlier, about family. I mean, she always made us feel welcome. We we were part of her household. Um, you know, literally um, every day we were probably at her house. I was I was very lucky. I went to school with Mithil, her son, um, and we, we actually went to school together from primary school, secondary school, um, all the way through till we did our A-levels. Um, and, you know, you, you just can't get away from how much she impacted you all, all, all the way. Um, importantly, I mean, without going through everything, you know, I can see it now, um, you know, after my, after my career, you know, um, having had two kids who have just gone through 11 plus as well, and you know, Guzman did that on top of everything else. She she helped me through my eleven plus exams um, to get into secondary school, and there was never a moment where she would say no. Nothing was too much, so she would she would cope with everything else going on. And you know, you always felt special. That was the thing, and it, it was very unique. So, so wow. that, that, that's a you know, it's something that I, I don't think, it, to be honest, I don't think there's anyone else that that can really demonstrate that it, it is a very, very um, unique yeah. thing to possess. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the world is now moving to what is known as holistic education. So you make, uh, you know, that education should not be uh, about a, a particular subject or theory, but about the, the human being, the whole person, their mind, body and spirit. And in a way, when we try and teach, we should try and inspire the whole person to, to be joyful about learning, to enjoy the learning process and to actually take, take it at a very deeper level for them so that it's meaningful. It's not something that they just have to learn to pass an exam or, or something like that. So in that sense, Kusum Ben was way ahead of her time, right? And in a way, remember a school teacher has five days a week with you, but Kusum Ben only has a couple of hours a week with you. And yet it seems that she has touched your life more than those teachers who you spend five days a week with. How, how is that possible? And, and I think it's, it's the personal aspect, you know, you, you can't get away from it. So, you know, we, I, I remember, you know, we would sit in her, her, her dining room table and, you know, at the time you think that she's focused on you, you know, you're, she, she actually created tests herself. She would talk you through that. But now you realize in the background, you know, she's got a whole family life, she's got a work life. And, you know, just to juggle all of that was just amazing. But oh, as, as I say, at the time, you felt that you were the, you were the one that she was focused on. Actually, you mentioned family. We, we didn't, for this discussion, because she has got so many facets of life, we didn't invite Mithul or, or Binubai for this discussion because we kind of wanted to hear from the people she has touched outside the family. Uh, you know, I think there is, there is a separate discussion about her whole family life, which itself is amazing. And then the Kutumb as well, you know, her, her Kutumb, she actually comes from a very big family. 
So I, I've, I know some of her relatives. I know one of her brothers lives in France. I visited Harish. I visited his house in France. But in a way, she's, she's like a fountain, multifaceted character. And we, we would need uh, weeks and weeks to really cover the breadth and depth of her life, you know. But I mean, just let's bring some memories. Let's talk about some productions that you did with her, you know, some plays and musicals. Uh, what, what, what do you remember about those performances? Oh. Um, so I'm Kripa um, to everyone else that's there. I was um, in the same classes, actually, Ash, you just spoke, Ayash, and uh, Mithul as well. Um, I, I mean, I, I just kind of want to touch on what Ash said as well, that it's only on, in growing up that you realise how many different things she was juggling. Like to me, at that time, she was a teacher. But having grown up and had a family and a career of your own, you suddenly realise that, oh, my gosh, all the work that goes into creating everything. And um, I know Vinubai, um, I know their family very well. My cousin's married to Mithul. And I know from speaking to Vinubai, he was saying that when she first started, there were no assets. She created all of those assets. Um, and one of the things that, that she also did, mm -hmm. um, in my mind, was create all these um, end, of, end of Gujarati school productions. Um, the whole school would get involved. And, you know, it was, um, it was something that formed a lot of friendships. But also it brought the whole community together as well. You know, you'd, you'd all parents, grandparents, uncles, aunties. Um, and, and that obviously took so much time, but it leaves a lot of memories, actually. All the different dances and plays and, and things that, that you got involved in. It, it, you know, looking back now, I I'm not even sure if that's going on now because um, I've been out of the community for a little while just because I haven't got children that are Gujarati school age. Um, yeah, and, 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 and I realise, wow, how much effort it took to do that. Yeah, so I mean, that, that whole aspect of uh, alongside the teaching, building a community, you know, building mm -hmm. a kind of shared sense of belonging, shared sense of learning, shared sense of play and creativity. I mean, today, you know, we are living in a pandemic and uh, one of the big words which keeps on coming back all the time is community is, you know, uh, you know, getting out of loneliness by belonging to a community. But of course, you can't build a community in a pandemic. Either the community was built earlier or not at all, right? So in that sense, what was it like to grow up as part of the Kusumben family, you know, as the larger Kusumben family, not the immediate family, but that larger family? And to, to feel that, you know, I may be Kinnery, but I'm also Neva, you know, to feel that I'm also Deepa, I'm Bhavisha too, you know. How was it like growing up like that, not knowing your own boundary and selfishness, if you like, but, but learning to be selfless? Perhaps Neva, you could say something here. Um, so, yeah, like um, I think Kripa mentioned, um, Gosunben and along with a lot of the other Gujarati school teachers, Gailashba and Yogesh Pai, we all, they all brought together a very big um, like shows at the end of the year. Uh, we always had the head girl prefect show and the end of year show. And Gosunben would always, always be involved. She would always be um, making a play up, directing the play and bringing students together, bringing um, families together. And she also directed a couple of uh, sh the Shali Padra show and the Rup Gosha show as well, which were quite big productions, which she was very heavily involved with. And um, she made she made doing these things very fun. It, it was never something she forced you to do. She always encouraged you, always encouraged you to kind of bring the best best side of you out and always made it, made it very playful, enjoyable, but at the same time was constantly teaching us um, it was always new ways to learn Gujarati, new ways to learn how to dance, to do a play, act, drama. Um, and I think a lot of students really flourished because it became a school where we weren't only learning our language, we were learning our culture because behind all these stories and plays that she directed, there was always a really lovely meaning, um, really lovely kind of thought behind it. And I think that's where we all grew together. We all we all grew, uh, grew up as friends. We, we became very close and 
even for myself, I recognize um, everyone on this call pretty much. And it's really nice to see so many familiar faces and you kind of always stay connected with these people because you have that, you have something that you've always done together. You have something where you, somewhere where you belong. Um, and I think Gustav Benz instilled a lot of these values in us, which, which, we've, which are the foundations of everyone growing up, which is really, really lovely. Oh, you put it so nicely, Neva. Thank you so much. Now, Rishi, you said earlier you were Neva's teacher. So right. <laughs> how, how, how did you cheat then? How did, I mean, you're not old enough to be a teacher. So how did you cheat into becoming a teacher so, from a child to a teacher? <laughs> so when we were at Gujarati school, um, Gusman Ben had a rule that you could only do a GCSE once you were in year 10. Even if you were ready before, she wouldn't let you do your GCSE exam until you were in year 10. And the reason for that was, was to keep us all connected for longer. And looking back, it was one of the best things uh, that she could have set for our school. After doing GCSE, she didn't really want any of us to leave. And she always found a way to keep us connected within the Oshwal community. So she would encourage us to become assistant teachers, to help the other teachers. And then once we had done that for a little while, she would encourage us to take classes uh, between us. So I shared a class actually with Neva's sister, Mira. We took a class together for, I think, two years we did that. Uh, and then when I left to go to university, Mira carried on, carried on teaching. Um, but she had a lot of time and patience to help train us and to and to teach us and to guide us into, into taking on those roles, um, which we would not have been able to do without her help, for sure. Wow. And also, you know, to be a teacher at that age, it must have given you so much confidence, Rishi, uh, you know, so much kind of sense of self-belief that, look, I can, I too can teach. And, 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 and then, of course, I'm sure you've, you've taken that into your profession. What do you do? What's your profession? Uh, I'm, I'm a dentist, but yeah, absolutely. Um, the confidence that we all got throughout Gujarati school, not just through becoming a teacher, but um, just from day one, public speaking, taking part in plays, dances, musical activities, um, the, the boost that she gave every individual student meant that we raised our own bar and we raised our own limits. You know, we didn't necessarily put limits on ourselves the way a mainstream school might. She didn't have those limits for us. So we really did feel that we could do a lot of things. Um, Neva was talking about the plays that we did um, at Ashcroft Theatre. And um, one thing that I recall was that those plays were always in April in the run-up to main exams like GCSEs, A-levels, all those things, none of us would ever even think twice about not taking part. We would be rehearsing until 10, 11 o'clock at night on multiple weekdays, and we would still be managing our schoolwork and revision and everything else that went with it. And there was never even a thing, I don't think any of us, Zippa or Raki, anyone, we ever said that, oh, we can't do this because we've got an exam at school or we've got an activity to do it, but we, we like Kusum then looked at her example and slotted everything in and learned to cope and like actually succeed at pretty much all of those things. So um, her example was exemplary on so many levels that uh, I haven't got enough words really. Wow, thank you so much. That's such a nice tribute you have. Actually, Kinnery, Kinnery has got some of the pictures of those productions. Kinnery, would you like to share those pictures, please? Yeah, no, I've actually got some pictures that she emailed me in 2012, um, so quite a few years ago now, and I'd just like to share some of those. Um, and perhaps, Priyanka, maybe you could talk about one of the plays, because actually you're and so is Pavisha. There's quite a few of us um, in that. So I'll just share and show you. So um, you can see you've got a picture here. Um, we're all quite dressed up. Um, and the script she Gosun Ben wrote herself. Um, we've got another one there. 
Um, I think we've got Bunsri as well, um, who's also in the call, and Priyanka. Um, and yeah, so would um, Priyanka, would you like to um, tell your story about the play? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I just want to firstly start by just thanking you all so much for organising. It's just so lovely to see everyone and just such a nice tribute to Cousin Men who touched our lives beyond, you know, what we can even put into words. Um, I mentioned Cousin Men ran these year in, year out. And it's a lot, it's a lot of work. You don't realise how much work goes into writing the plays, organizing all the practice rehearsals, the dance, the music, everything. It's incredible what she did. Um, and yeah, it was just so much fun. The kind of one memory I have in particular is I loved music and dance um, growing up. I still do. And one of the plays, Gus and Ben wrote all the music, all the lyrics to the songs. And then she asked me to compose the music for it. Um, so I composed the music and myself and a group of other people, we arranged to go to a recording studio with like our keyboards and, you know, proper recording studio with the vocals and everything. And we made this whole soundtrack just from, you know, with the children at Gujarati school. And it was the most amazing experience. And I remember just looking at the plays that Kusuman had written and the songs that she'd written. She was just so amazingly talented above everything else. Just her literary skills was just amazing my mum is um Jagati Ben she's on this call as well and we used to you know sit down and go through all the meanings of everything and it was so beautifully written it was oh, she's just incredible and obviously we've talked about plays and things but Gusman also taught me Jainism and if there is anyone that is the epitome of the values of Jainism it, it, it was Gusman Ben because she was the most kindest purest person I've ever met you know we all go through life and we have stressful times we can get a bit agitated angry you know frustrated with things and I always think back to Kusum Ben I think you know no matter how much stress she must have been under no matter how many activities she'd undertaken she was so calm she had time for everyone she, it was incredible. Priyanka I am <laughs> that you mentioned your mother as well uh, that was fantastic thank you but we'd love to hear from Jagruti Ben. I met her. Oh my God, what an amazing soul. Like all of you teachers, Jagruti Ben, can we see you? Is she is she on the is she on the call? Yeah, she's under my nanny ma's name, so it says Bhanu Shah, but mum's on the call. Right, I am Oh, Jagruti, Mummy Darshna Ben, Ane Nima Ben. मुझे रूम से क्या चुका you have brought up these children and you should also feel proud kusum ben is proud wherever she is apne emna atma ne shanti e chhe ane apne kahe ke na ye jeevan chhe apna ma apna bada ma jeevan chhe atyana jagruti ben tame teach karta tha ne gujarati emna sathe हार्मोनियम वगर ते क्या हार्मोनियम क्या गोर नीमा बेन दर फेरे हार्मोनियम हो અને સંગીત એને મોમ્બાસા થી શીખાડ્યું છે અહીંયા આગળ કેટલા થાઉઝન્ડ ઓફ ચિલ્ડ્રન ને સાચી વાત જાગૃતિ બેન થાઉઝન્ડ ઓફ કે છે તમે ઘણા લોકોને સંગીત શીખવ્યું છે ત્યાં તો ખાસ ગુજરાતી અને સ્વિમ સ્વિમિંગ પણ આ દેશમાં આવ્યા પછી સંગીત સંગીત કરાવતી હતી 
અને ગોલ્ડન જે જોન છે ત્યાં વહી ખુશ થઈ ગઈ કે કુસુમ જેવી ભક્તિ મળશે અને કુસુમ એને જે સાથ આપ્યો છે એક જ ભૂલાયું નથી અને એમને નામ પ્રમાણે કુસુમ પ્રમાણે એમને પોતાની સુગંધ ફેલાવી છે એક જ ભૂલાશે નહીં yeah the kusum means fragr- fragrance and fragrance travels far and wide without you even realizing where it's coming from right ne that's exactly ap emne life yaad kari to e j aave emni emni kusum yaad aave to let me just take you back a little bit to her life story kada tamne bada ne khabar nahi hoy she was born in kitui in 1948 kitui kitui is actually a small town in central kenya where the local tribe is called mkamba or akamba and they are a very lovely gentle african people now they would have been at that time they would she would have been they would have been a minority in that town but one of the things about being a minority in kenya versus being a minority in britain is that people don't put you down they allow you to be yourself they allow you to take pride in your own culture and i heard that every night in the evening the father her father used to do bhakti and sing bhajans every night so this is the environment in which kusum ben was raised right so she was raised with music and art all around her she went to mumbai in 1965 to study for a degree in mathematics can you imagine mumbai in 1965 to 1970 it was a heaven it was very peaceful it wasn't so crowded at it as it is today and she there she got the whole influence of the colors of india the vibrancy of india and then when she came back to kenya in 1975 uh, sorry 1970 she actually ended up in mombasa and she became a school teacher uh, now so there she became a professional school teacher and taught for 4 years until she got married to vinubai in 1974 and then she came to the uk right so 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 she was before she came here she was already an international world citizen right she had experience of kenya experience of india and and a home life which was full of culture language language art everything so very rich home life and very large family as well and then she came she started work here in britain uh, she started working for the civil service mithul was born in 1975 so one year after she got married uh, mithul was born so she had she was raising her children and her family at the same time as she was working and uh, she, you know in 19 what 1998 right after 25 years in the civil service she was one of the first in fact the first ever jane lady in britain to get an mbe from the queen right so kusum ben got an mbe and that mbe was not necessarily about gujarati teaching which all of you have been touched by but actually a lot of it was about her work life and how dedicated she was in the civil service and how many colleagues she inspired through her work life so remember that's a whole another facet and we haven't invited in this conversation all the people she worked with and how she touched their lives so you know like a kusum like a rose has so many petals there were so many petals to her life right and we are just looking at some of those petals that have been touched and we have been touched by that fragrance and then of course she got an mb also in recognition of her community service So there is a now the young people may have heard there is a very famous writer called Akala and he's written a best selling book called Native and he grew up in a mixed race house actually with a single mother in in London uh in uh, kind of inner London where there was a lot of racism a lot of discrimination and uh, of course you know they were very poor as a family and and in school he was very very clever but because he was so clever the school teachers because they were racist and discriminated tried to put him down they in fact at one point they even put him two classes down just to try and shut him up 
and he said that the transformation in his life today is a world famous musician world famous writer poet musician akala he said the transformation in his life came from the saturday school and the saturday school was where he learned about african history african culture uh, african uh, you know way of life food etc and that's where he grew his identity and his pride and he said he and he credits all his success to that saturday school right and and in a way that's what you are all saying as well that you know you went to mainstream school to learn the subjects but to actually learn about yourself and develop your own strength character confidence creativity personality all that happened on those saturdays and then the big shows so the big shows were kind of like the marathon you know she forced you to stretch yourself you know she forced you to raise your target raise your 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 ambition and to grow and reach beyond what you th thought you could have done right so for example i came to see the production in fairfield hall at that time hardly any community would think of staging a production at fairfield hall prakash bhai patalia was her ally in this unfortunately he can couldn't join this zoom call but he said at that time people thought fairfield hall how will we fill it you know uh, how will we sell the tickets and how will we afford the cost of fairfield hall but what a production you did and what a performance and he said you raised 30000 pounds in that one event in that one day so for the gujarati school for the jain school the channa vidya pit all the amazing work that you were doing you needed to raise money as well so can you tell us a little bit more about how you felt stretched you know you you felt taken i mean rishi touched on it beyond your limits you know you you and but you didn't feel you couldn't do it anyone priyanka you're a doctor aren't you yeah i am and i think i think just everyone on this got doctors teachers dentists actors like you know such a wide range of professions and all of these people they went to gujarati school you know they did the extra day of school on a saturday we all did the extra gcses the a levels we took part in all the shows but none of us did it stop us it probably helped us manage our time balance our work life making sure we had work but we also had our enjoyment activities as well and you know we've all got to the professions we were all reaching to and Kusum Ben was truly an inspiration for that because she really showed us all that you can do all of these things and you don't have to compromise on anything just like she did. Wow. Uh okay, thank you Priyanka. Can you tell us some more examples of how you think you're living Kusum Ben's uh spirit today? <laughs> oh, just so many ways. I mean I think a few of us have said it already but she really was just the kindest person I've ever met and I really strive to be that kind-hearted kind-spirited you know practice the my jane values in my day-to-day -day life in my work as well with my patients I think that's probably the biggest impact she has and you know I think about her all the time me and mom talk about her all the time you know mom both of us still get very emotional thinking about her because she really had that much impact she really was you know someone we lots and lots of people looked up to uh, yeah i i can't even put into words i think i think you are you're so right about uh, you know the importance of you know being a doctor you're trying to help somebody but if you don't care for them if it's you rush to write a prescription or or rush to get to the next appointment then you're actually not making a difference to their health you know you just it's like a production line it's a factory right uh, and there's so much pressure to do that nowadays but in a way what you're doing is you're resisting those pressures and being human being kind being in a way that to me is jainism you know a lot of people say jainism is about the temple or about the rituals about the fasting etc 
but you know what you're doing with your life by being a professional by being caring by upholding public values you know i mean i can just be uh, imagine being in kinnery's classroom you know and 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 experiencing that that sense of selflessness her her desire to lift me to an, to a place where i didn't even know i could go right so you are already living her life and her legacy and i think you know through this series what we are trying to do is to we, we are living in such an instantaneous social media world right but we're trying to remind the current generation go back into your past and actually take a bit of time to understand your past your history and and actually a lot of young people think jainism is all about the temple is is a no religion you know that you can't do this you can't do that you can but it's actually a yes religion i mean can you imagine did kusum men tell you no to anything did she that you can't do this you can't do that that's impossible for you and just one thing i wanted to say um was um a message from um shami nitin shah unfortunately she couldn't be here today um but she is someone who religiously went to jain school um every single week um and was taught by kosum ben and i i really used to wonder oh why did why did she go to jain school every week you know it's a bit earlier than the time gujarati school starts but when i actually had kosum ben as a teacher and when i was involved in the plays and productions i realized the amount she learned from kosum ben um and the values that she has carried forward today i just like to read a message um she passed on so she said that kosum ben was the most kind warm hearted being she came across during her teenage years she was always smiling opening her arms out she deeply enjoyed jain school and gujarati school and all the plays that uh, she did and a large reason was because of kosum ben she learned a great deal from kosum ben from her patience to her generosity and she just finished the message by saying i'm sure she's elsewhere now sharing the same positive values with a bright smile and it it was her bright smile and her attitude um that i believe everyone carries forward wow fantastic kinnery you also have a short video of her would you like to show that video yes i will share that now so this is a video i did for the 2010 masala tour of britain uh, i interviewed her about her life story and the legacy uh and of course now it's become memorable we didn't realize she would leave us so young um uh, we shared the school uh, with maybe just about 13 40 children um they were all interested in learning the language um it was a language that was spoken in most of the homes then so teaching the language wasn't that difficult it is more of a challenge teaching the language now because no longer it is the language of the home uh, most people speak the uh, english in their home uh, gujarati is a, is a second language or modern for language to them so it in in the in the early days we just had to teach gujarati as a language but it's more of a literary language but is now we have to start with the basics and go through the grammatical forms etc uh, and then go on to maybe um, simple literature mm. so your suggestion to the community is bijal tell us your story you've been quiet and i think as almost everyone has kind of their story said um she was just such an incredible woman she always encouraged everyone in one way or another i think i definitely wouldn't have done as much as i did if it wasn't for her um i remember every year when it came to the productions and you know she would ask like oh would you would you be the narrator for this play or you know i think you do really good or will you take part in these dances and most every time i would think oh i don't like 
all of those hours of practice again? Do I want to do it again? But it was almost one of those things where it's like you just wouldn't want to disappoint her because she was just this incredible woman and she was just trying to pull off these um, plays and things so often. Um, but then obviously in the end it was just this thing of everyone having lots of fun and you know you at Gujarati class obviously you meet everyone but it's then at practices and the dance rehearsals and all the you know dress rehearsals and everything that you actually do build on like we said before like community also like Neva mentioned like the all though it's probably been many years since we've all um, seen each other we all are still kind of connected and if we cross paths again it would still be you know, really nice um, also like Neva mentioned about like career and things I remember we were talking about this uh, good class and um, so I'm a pediatric nurse and at the time I was still kind of thinking not sure exactly what I want to do and I mentioned it and she was probably one of the first people who was actually very encouraging about it um, there were a lot of people who the response I got was, well, why would you be a nurse? Why don't you just be a doctor? Or why don't you do this? You know, why would you just be a nurse? Um, and I think, uh, you know, her values and her principle, it was always about helping people and doing good. And um, yeah, she, she was very encouraging in general about anything, no matter what it is. And she will, she would kind of help you get to that point, whether it's, I don't know, rehearsing for a play and you say, oh, I'm not too sure how I'm going to remember this whole script. Because it's not just that you do it, you know, she'd want you to obviously do it properly, do it well. And she would, you know, invite you to her house to do that extra rehearsal or make sure that you've perfected it and you're confident with it before you do it. Things like that. Um, I don't know, she... Yeah, no, 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 that's so She was such a kind and soft person. Yeah, thank you. Um, she had such a presence. Like, I'm sure most of us remember the kind of assembly hall would be so noisy and would be running around like yeah. mad. Yeah. But the second Gusumba walked in, everyone would be silent and just sit down. And I didn't think anyone had that presence wow. okay. um, at Gujarat class. Yeah. And it was just, she just, everyone respected her, whether it was, you know, from year one, year one um, students, all the way up, the teachers, you know, whoever it was, she just had that presence. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. She was, just, she was just an incredible person. She was so modest. Yeah. She never wanted, no matter how much she did, she never really wanted that recognition. Even if it was at the end of the show, she wouldn't really want to go onto stage, you know, for everyone to clap for her. Or even if it was something like her birthday and then it would be announced in the assembly, she would just be like, oh, no, 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 no. She, you know, she wouldn't want to stand up for that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would somebody else like to tell us uh, some of their memories of Kusum Men? Uh, unfortunately, Bijal, your sound has not been uh, great. So let's hear from, uh, I, there's so many places, faces I can see, Bina, Kilna, people who haven't spoken, Akshi, uh, and Josnaben, the teacher, Josnaben, 
Joshna Ben, are you there still? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, tell us, tell us your story. Well, to put it, um, I think most of the youngsters have already given all the qualities. For me, I think uh, when I look at Kusumen or I looked at Kusumen and when I worked with Kusumen, it was her inner self, not herself as a, as a Kusumen, I would say. She was more like a, you know, everything was coming from inside. When you say, you know, she did not want any recognition, that's what it was. Whatever she was doing it, she had this vision, somehow, some kind of a vision, you know, sort of like whatever, even when she did the production, now we are looking back and looking at exactly what was in the scripture. She could visualize that, have all those props done, have all the words written down the way it should be portrayed. And I was wondering that quality must be her inner quality, not something she has you know, just learned through the books or anything like that, but putting everything together without, as you say, any selfish moting, a time, effort, whatever she put in was from coming within herself, which I think in when you think of Jane value, that's what it is. Looking everybody as as a as a soul, not as an as a main person, and then looking through their qualities, and then come bringing those qualities out, but not telling them that I am bringing your quality out. The quality were there already, but the way she was working with every one of us as a team, whatever potentiality we had, she would put everything together as a teamwork and then bring it out together. I think that we miss a lot and we still remember and carry that legacy with our Chandavidya team as well. Yeah, I mean, in fact, I'm glad you mentioned that, Josna Ben, because, you know, alongside the Gujarati school, they later, she later built the, the Jain school. And remember, the, yeah. material, the material for the Jain school, the education material, yeah. not as if you take it out of a shelf and teach it. You have to, you have to create it. You have to shape yeah. it. And I think because she was leaving that. Yeah, she was leaving that and also making us first you leave it and then once you practice it, and then when you deliver it, it becomes true. So I think that what she was, she was that person who would first practice it and then ask others to practice. Yeah, but, but you know, and, and that itself, I mean, she trained an army of Jain teachers, right? You were yeah. one of them, but Trushet, I know, I know Josh. Yeah. The other, We've other been together for 20 years, yes. Uh, yes. And, and then uh, so many others, I mean, incredible yeah. teachers. And then these teachers in turn inspired uh, the children who learned against her. You could say almost like that she gave a new face to Jainism, a new face to Gujarati in the Western world, you know, by. Yeah, Western world, especially to work through with the children, you know, like children, are, uh, the youngsters are saying, to play, to, you know, sort of having this, uh, especially the production, it was bringing all the moral, all the messages of Jainism, but through play, you know, like dance, you know, words, everything. And also, you know, the respect to give to each other, not just for elderly, but respect to each and every individual from elderly to the younger one, you know, because she used to have five year old also joining the team and doing the production. And she looked at each and everyone as an individual and yet work as a team. But, but just now, I you know, we've got the census tomorrow. Yeah. And most young people in our community don't want to be called Jane. You know, they're embarrassed to be called Jane. In fact, many of them end up writing Hindu, right? But actually uh, we are Jane, right? So, so do you think that young people are misunderstanding Jainism, that Kusumben was, was actually Jainism in spirit, you know, that, that this idea that Jainism is about ritual, about fasting, about the temple, that's all Jainism is, right? But here we see a very different, a yeah. very creative aspect of Jainism. Yeah, more very, following the very, philosophy, yeah, philosophy, and then living it, that philosophy, rather than, you know, sort of 
rituals, yes, rituals were the tools, but then people used to stop at rituals and not carry it on further into their own daily practice to practice it and how to live in harmony with whole community, whole world, whole universe, whatever. So that was what Kusumban was trying to portray it more and more through with all this, you know, that yes, like youngsters are saying, the school was school, coming to Saturday for Gujarati culture and everything. But then when they brought, took that culture into the schooling, it helped them. That became their tool, having that Saturday, you know, aspect of doing Gujarati, learning the culture, doing the learning your background as well. Mm -hmm. So I think bringing a, at the moment they may not feel that they, they do not have to have that label of Jain onto that thing platform because they think they are morally mm -hmm. are you know being a human and being a good citizen. But bringing that Jain perspective is, I think. To me at the moment is when you go through all this, uh, especially hospitals yeah, yeah, yeah. are so important where you are for your meals, you know, if you are practicing Jainism through and through, which yeah. is very difficult in medic medicines as well, where Thank you are you. trying to bring your vegetarianism, veganism, it's so difficult. So putting that will maybe bring us more, you know, platform, more strong platform. Yeah, thank you, Palvi and Bavin. Sorry, I've made you wait. Uh, I know you're you're ready. You really want to share your stories, so please, can you come up, uh, Palvi or Bavin, whoever's ready? <laughs> it's just it's just Palvi here. Um, so Arif, can you switch on the light? Just to introduce myself, um, I'm actually Kailash Ben's daughter and Rishi's sister, um, uh, and I have my inquisitive children running around behind me. So. Um, I don't really want to repeat what everybody has said uh, too much. Kusum Pabi was beyond amazing. Uh, one thing that I always say about her, uh, especially when I speak to Mithul, is that she had magic hands. And whatever she touched, she managed to turn everything she touched into gold and beyond. Um, she very, she was extremely magical, but a few things that Kusum Ben, or, or as I call her, Kusum Pabi did, um, she, she gave us all an opportunity um, to use Gujarati and to use the skills that she taught us through the plays and sitting exams and being able to multitask to actually start off all of our careers. So, you know, uh, when you're 16 and you're looking for that summer job, um, and you need to produce a CV. There isn't much you can put on your CV when all you've done is been to school. And through Gujarati school, she actually gave us so many skills that we could talk about when we went to those first interviews, when we were applying for jobs, colleges, universities, um, because she created opportunities for us to practice those skills so that we could demonstrate them at a later, la at later point in time. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to mention that she made such a big difference to everyone's starting points in life. And the other thing was um, my children at school, they, one of the things they learn about is, you know, trying to be more green. Um, so they, they have this thing called the three R's, reduce, recycle, and reuse. And we were, <laughs> we were learning about those things, you know, even before they became part of the curriculum in mainstream school, which they are now, all the productions, all the things that we had, you know, Kusum Pavi really encouraged us to make our own costumes, to repurpose things that we already had, you know, you know, there wasn't always a budget for these things. And she would help us to make things from scratch and not only make them, but then also make them durable so they could be used again and again and again. Um, and she was able to create pretty much nothing, something from nothing. Um, and those are the skills that she has instilled that are still being used today. 
uh, where, where we're living in a culture where it's so easy to just order something, but actually there's a lot of sense of pride and value in being able to create things of your own. So just a few thoughts of mine that I thought oh, I would share brilliant. with everyone. Uh, Palvi, while we have you, it's interesting that nobody, although we've had so many girls, so many women coming and speaking about her, nobody said that how for a woman growing up, she was a great female role model. Now, remember, in you know, we are living still in a male dominated society. And, and even sometimes in our community, I feel there is a very strong male domination so far as so many things are concerned, you know. What was it like growing up as a woman to have such a strong, encouraging female role model? You know, somebody who you could look up to, somebody who you who could you could aspire to. Because if you didn't have her, what would you have had to look up to? Well, um, Gusum Ben, uh, or as I as I have always called her, Gusum Pabi, because uh, we are related. Gusum Pabi was more than a female role model. She was a role model for every mother, every daughter, um, every married woman. She was a role model for everybody. She knew what her role was in life. And even though she had her family, she was able to achieve so much outside of her four walls and no one could ever deny that she didn't fulfill all her family obligations at the same time and that's pretty amazing to do you know she she's I, I can't articulate how how inspirational she was and actually how many people she's shaped I mean I know that um she's guided my mum and, and contributed to the person that my mum is today in so many ways. And it's because of her, because she was such a powerful role model in my mum's life, in my life, in Rishi's life, that she was able to influence us in such a subtle way that you didn't even realise that she had just worked her magic on you and guided you in the right direction because she did it in such a way that you didn't even realize that you were moving forward in the right way. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting the way you describe her, Palvi, because one of the things that nowadays people talk about is feminism. But I never saw Kusumben as a feminist. No. You she agree? Was, she wasn't, I don't think she was complete. She didn't, she didn't not believe that women couldn't achieve anything. But she also, she also held, you know, traditional values to heart as well. So she achieved everything that she wanted to achieve in life, but she still was very traditional in, in many ways. So she almost had a balance of, of, both, of both aspects of life. So I wouldn't necessarily call her a uh, an outward feminist, but actually she, she probably didn't even realize how much of a feminist she was because she showed women that they could have a career and they could also have a traditional family life. Wow, that's, that's quite a statement considering, you know, that time in the 80s and 90s and the 2000s, you know, and I know how she has been such a, an amazing role model. It must have been quite tough to be a, a, a woman at that time. Even, okay, you all, some of you, many of you were young at that time. For the teachers, you know, uh, that the perception of women was so different. And, uh, you know, it seems that she gave them a, a, a kind of, uh, a, you know, a self-pride self and, and, and a sense of purpose and a sense of duty and a sense of mission uh, and, uh, you know, we, well, we are seeing now the result, you know, how, because it's so hard. It's not easy to run a Saturday school, you know, because everyone has that Monday to Friday obligation. Then they have to find parking, bring the children there. Uh, somebody mentioned about the noisy uh, children in, uh, you know, and as soon as Kusum Ben walked in, everyone became quiet. I mean, that kind of, you know, noise and to deal with all of that is requires a lot of patience, 
a lot of kindness and uh, to do that on top of all the other household chores and the duties, etc., is absolutely remarkable, re remarkable. I mean, I'm a professor at a university and one of the things I feel so strongly about is that we actually have become factories. Most universities have become factories. So we don't really even know our students' personal lives or you know, we don't know them in any sense of depth or intimacy and almost, and especially in business education, it's a very, the whole education method is very top down, you know, so like, here, this is the science, come here and learn it. Uh, and then we will set the exams and we will decide whether you pass or fail. Uh, and then go to, go, and then when you graduate, that's your problem as to what you do after graduation, Not, nothing to do with us. No, no, no. Our job is just to teach. But here you have a person who is interested in every facet of your life and actually goes right deep into your soul, right? And in a way, that's exactly the kind of education the world is now calling out for. And she was in that sense so ahead of her time. Um, and, and uh, you know, we talk about peace today, you know, like America says there should be peace in the Middle East, but America has got the largest army in the world, you know, whereas here with Kusumben's life, she, she actually promoted peace by being peaceful herself, you know, so she was a soldier of peace. She didn't let things drift. She didn't let things happen just the way they are. No, she had a mission, a mission to educate, a mission to transform, a mission to carry the whole community forward, to build a whole new generation of proud citizens of Britain who can take peace with them, whatever they do, whatever, you know, the new families. I mean, Palvi, you're bringing up children and they're there. I saw them just now. You are effectively instilling that peacefulness in them which is exactly what the world needs. You know, that respect for climate comes from your own values and culture first and foremost. You know, it's not just about carbon offset or about putting a, a solar panel in your house or recycling your rubbish. It's about your culture, your values, how you think, how you behave, how kind you are to your neighbors, to your friends. So thank you all so much for sharing amazing aspects. I know you could have gone on for hours. Maybe there's some last words that people would like to say before we draw this meeting to a close. And I, I, I'd like to say this is only the beginning. My ambition is that there should be a, a book written about Kusumben's life story. And that book should go into every library in Britain. And that book should not just be about a, an Indian lady or a Jain lady, it should be about one of the world's rarest women, right? And it should be for all the world, not just for one community or one society. So that's my ambition. Let's all hope that it will be realized that we get a professional writer to write that story, collect all those uh, gems, gems from her life, and show how it is possible to live Jainism and Gujarati culture in the 21st century in London and inspire so many people just as a temple does or, uh, uh, you know, uh, other things. So please, some last words from you, and especially those who haven't spoken before. So we have Atul Bhai, if I can speak. Yes, please. Yeah. So, who are you? It's Yogesh Bhai. Ah, Yogesh, come in, please. Yeah. Sorry, my name is uh, wrong on the screen. But yeah, that's okay. I explained earlier, yeah. Um, yeah, I just like to say that uh, 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 I say Kusum Ben, but she was my Kaki as well, so Kusum Kaki. Uh, she's always been inspired, inspired for us, the school, for our family, and everyone around her. I mean, I have I was a head of school for many many years and it was because of her that she she inspired me she was my right hand person my backbone to and guided me through all the uh, uh, duties of a head of school she was not only a teacher or head teacher in South London but she was a part of the Gujarati uh, community throughout, I mean, all the nine Oshawa schools, 
uh, and every other Gujarati school were connected to her in one way or the other. Atulba, you mentioned the uh, army of teachers. We used to call our teachers the A-team. She was the leader of the A-team. She had many other titles apart from MBE. She was the A-team leader, family pillar of the school. She was teacher, head teacher. But to me, I called her Sar uh, Saraswati Mata. That show, that's what she was. Wow. She was the goddess of education, Gujarati education, okay. uh, culture, religion, drama, music, everything. Oh, what a lovely way to describe her. I've actually, I mean, yeah, I've got a, a, a sculpture of Saraswati Mata here. <laughs> and absolutely, she embraced all of that. The, the music, the art, the culture, the pride, the dignity. And uh, oh, fantastic, Yogesh. And, and Yogesh, you know, like you said, if you said that you were doing the administration for the school, you played a very important mm -hmm. role because if it weren't for you, how would all of, all of this come together? You know, so if we needed so many different people had to do, I mean, Prakash Bhai, I know for the Channa Vidya Pit, Josna Ben is here, Prakash Patalia was exactly did the job that you did for the Gujarati exactly. school, uh, you know, and, and, and it's such an important role. And Prakash Bhai was such an amazing ambassador for the school. And the two of them worked so closely together. They got on so well. And, and they were able to enable through those, those activities, enable all of this and catalyze it, you know, make it happen because it's so hard. It's so hard to do voluntary work. You know, it's so hard and so many challenges, you know, including I know the amount of financial challenges you had because actually I'm, I'm shocked to say that today in our community, we have not just uh, millionaires, but multi, multi millionaires. But if, if you were to ask them how much of that money is invested in our cultural education or in, 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 in preserving stories like this, in encouraging young people to take pride in culture. I just spoke to an artist, one of our most talented young artists in the country. And there is no sponsorship for, for our Jane art today. So I, you know, I think that we should all together speak loudly to the community and especially those billionaires and multimillionaires, you know, who live in these palaces. What are you doing with your money? You know, why are you not inspiring using your success and your wealth to inspire such soldiers of peace, to inspire these stories to be preserved, to, to write, to publish a beautiful book about the life of Kusumben. Where are you? Are you hiding? Come out of your hiding because we want you to do the easiest part. Giving money is easy. Giving time that Kusum Ben gave, giving skill, knowledge, intelligence, creativity, compassion, patience. That's much, much harder, you know. So especially those people who have made money in property, in stock market, you have not made any effort to earn that money. So I speak to all of you. What cultural education institutions are you building today? And if not, why not? You know, because Jainism says you should be not greedy. You shouldn't be, you should practice aparigra. You should be selfless with your wealth. Anybody else for final words? Hi, Atul Bhai, Girish Poluchu. Oh, oh, Girish, tell us. Yeah. Uh, the, the inspiration that he gave to my son, Jiga, uh, was very great because he did his all levels, A levels in Gujarati. Then he accompanied Kusuman to check the A levels uh, Cambridge examination papers. Mm. And after that, uh, he just succeeded and uh, he's not around here to say more. But this is what uh, Kusuman gave it to her. And my wife, who is a teacher as well, uh, she was the one who inspired her to teach Gujarati and they became very close friends and every week without a phone call from Kusuman or my wife, uh, get in touch with each other, uh, discuss about Gujarati technically. That's what I can say. And she was an inspirational lady. And when I was an education chairperson, she was a head teacher at that time as well. And she was very humble lady.
uh, so we say one in a million technically. Yeah. That's all I can say. Yeah. And she, you know, we haven't really talked much about the challenges she had in doing yeah. what she did. There was a lot of politics. There were a lot of barriers. Mm -hmm. There were also a lot of financial restrictions and constraints, but she overcame all of that, you know, and she didn't, the children, all the children were speaking just now. They yeah. didn't know any of what was going on behind the scenes, you know? Yeah, that, that's right. Because yeah. even when she was in hospital, you know, when we go to go to see her and sometimes take food for her, she says, don't take, you know, don't, don't do these things. And we said, look, we are, as a friends, we are not just coming for a, any other reason. We just, as as a past thing, we become friends and we are helping each other out. And that's how we come get in contact with them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Girish Bhai. Anybody else? Come uh, on. Patil Bhai, Ucharu Bolushu. How Ucharu Bhai? Probably you remember me from Gujarati school oh, library. <laughs> Namaste. Yes, yes. Namaste. <laughs> Uh, I only have few words to add. Kusumben was my great friend, neighbor, helper, everything. She was all everything to me. Uh, people have said everything about her, which fits in very well. She was at one time. She was controlling 13 teachers and 262 students at Gujarati school. Everything was running so smoothly and each and every person was happy with what she was doing. Um, as you probably remember, you visited Gujarati school library a few times and that was her idea. And that is how we set up the library. And I was working in the office, but it was such a wonderful time that I spent with her. She was my great friend, my neighbor and everything. When I moved to North London 12 years ago, and we had very short time to pack up and move. She and Venubai helped us so much I mustn't forget her because she was, she told me to pack up and I was at her house every day having three meals for many days. That's how I was able to move quickly. But Kusumil will never be forgotten. I owe everything to her. We miss you Kusumil and I'm sure all the past teachers and everybody else will do as well. She and is with us. She is for with whatever us. you have done for me and my family, I pray for you. She is with us. She is with us. She lives with us because that yeah. well, you are still with us, and I can see yeah. the youngsters get. I'm sure. So, you know, I'm sure this will go a long, long way. Thank you, Atul Bai, for giving us the platform. Thank you. Atulpai, I would like to say something. Yeah, please. Okay, my, my, my name is Rashmi, and uh, I have been a Gujarati teacher uh, uh, for 16 years, and I, I was very lucky to be with uh, Kusumben, and um, she introduced SAT exams when I was in year seven uh, teaching children, and the uh, help she gave with the exams, I just can't really tell how much helpful she was. And uh, even when she was in hospital, uh, I went to see her and I had given her some exam papers before to check. When she was in hospital, she told me, oh, Rashmi Ben, I'm sorry, I still haven't checked your papers. So she was still worried about, you know, the school papers. The other thing inspired me was, um, she knew names of all the children in the school. It's just unbelievable memory she had. And the amount of uh, notes she, re she re researched, the, whatever she had to teach, and she wrote with chalk on the blackboard we used to have in the school. So writing with the chalk with all those notes, I'm sure some of the students remember how much uh, notes they had to write down 
so everything of hers really, really inspires me, I think. And we really miss Kusum Ben because she was such an inspiration for all of us. Wow. Thank you. Also that going back, <laughs> Atul Bhai, also going back many, many years when we started the Gujarati school, I can recall uh, she was the one who introduced the Gujarati school syllabus as well, together with Rati Bhai. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so some final Hello. words from some of the students. How are you carrying the torch with you? What are you going to do? What are you going to commit to in, into your future? How do we keep Kusumban spirit alive? So Kusumban uh, was actually my teacher as well uh, for A-level. So she taught me AS and A2 in the same year. Because uh, that was the last year that she was actually going to be teaching. And I didn't want to take on A2 without her. Um, I would say that she didn't just teach us about Gujarati language, but definitely about the Gujarati culture and the values that we have. And whenever I think about uh, Osho Gujarati school, she was the first person that will come to my mind. And I believe that the values that she possessed as well, I'm able to, you know, encompass that in my day-to-day -day role as well. So like, um, I was also like um, doing assistant teaching at Gujarati school. I learned so many skills from that. I learned about how passionate she was about teaching as well. And one thing I'll remember about her is that she had like a really sweet voice, which I can still remember in my head. So whenever she would say someone's name or whenever she would explain something, she would explain it such an sweet manner and it was always lovely to be in a class and learn from her. Wow, thank you so much Bansuri. That's such a sweet way to remember her and thanks for sharing. Um, so you, so some more uh, young people, some final thoughts? Rishi, are you there? Neva? Hi, um, no, it's, it's been really, really nice to just um, talk and remember all the amazing memories and it's it's just so incredible to see how many lives Gusenben has touched and um, it's something that she'll never be forgotten. Um, I'm sure we'll always carry a part of her throughout our lives and I'm still very young, I've still um, got a long way to go in life but she's definitely inspired me in many ways of how to lead life, how to lead myself as a person um, and how to carry forward in a family life as well. And I think um, I'm really grateful to have, to have been inspired by her so much, I think. Thank you. So Kinnery, I think you have the last word now. Kinnery, oh. you've been very quietly orchestrating us all. Um, Please, yeah, oh, sorry, Awo, Kon. Sorry, Atul Bhai, can I just say yes. a few words? Yes. Uh, I'm Kanta Shah and uh, Kusum Ben and I worked for a number of years together in, in the exam board. And uh, she worked with me very harmoniously and with all the other examiners. And she helped any examiner that needed help. And uh, I think uh, we have got very high regards for her. We all the examiners have very high regards for her. Uh, we did some conferences together as well. And I will never forget the way we worked harmoniously, uh, consulting each other every evening as to what we were going to do and how we were going to carry forward uh, our thoughts to the teachers and uh, other helpers. So uh, Kusum Ben was a great person. She will never be, uh, she has been missed very greatly by all the examiners and always when writing papers or correcting papers or revising papers, we think, oh, if Kusum Ben was here, she would have helped us with this language, this grammar, or how to use these adjectives and so on. So thank you very much for doing this. And uh, we loved Kusum Ben. She was polite, quiet, but working hard. Uh, I, I missed most of the seminar, I mean, today's Zoom because we had trouble in getting in. Okay. So anyway, yeah. thank you thank very you. much for thank whatever you. I've gained. Thank you for those words. I, I think one of the message which comes out is that, uh, you know, we're living in, an, in a time where if you tell somebody you're a teacher, they say, oh, I'm sorry. 
you know, as if as if it's almost like the last job that one could do. But actually, uh, you know, a teacher and just look at how many lives she has touched. A teacher is a bit like a farmer of wisdom that they plant wisdom wherever they go. They sow these seeds, they empower and a good teacher empowers students, teachers, everyone to be to go beyond themselves. And, and when you give knowledge to somebody, you don't lose anything, you gain, right? So I think the whole profession of teaching needs to be revived. Respect for teaching needs to increase in our community. We are respecting all these multimillionaire businessmen, but actually, why not our teachers? You know, so what if they are not earning high salaries or whatever, but look at how much how many souls they are changing, how many lives they are transforming. Why is it our teachers don't have the kind of respect that we give to multimillionaires, right? And Kinnery, I think in that sense, you it would be lovely to hear from you about you know, how, what you're doing as a teacher being inspired by Kusumben in your classroom. How are you today in your school inspiring your classroom? One thing I think about most teachers, when you all look at it, are more, ladies <laughs> yeah that's true because again they are generous and they are willing to care and and sensitive and patient because all those qualities are needed you know so kinari i want to give you the last word um thank you so um yeah just in my teaching practice um a lot i've learned from not only gossam ben but all the teachers at gujarati class who have learned from gossam ben it's just that it's more than teaching um facts and statistics and data it's all about shaping someone's life and influencing them um, beyond the classroom and it's the values that stick with children um I think that are most important and I think that shows in what everyone has said and I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who responded I was so overwhelmed by the fact that I sent this message out and so many people came back um, and were so um, willing to talk about their memories with Gossam Ben and how Gossam Ben has influenced them in their lives um, and I just think that shows the huge impact she has had on all of us. So um, thank you to everyone. Thank you, Kinnery. Um, so then perhaps let's all end with a lovely prayer for Kusum Ben's soul. Uh, and for, for all. Yeah. Quickly, um, I would like to thank everyone for joining today and you for organizing this. Um, it's nice to see all the past students uh, after many years. Uh, just one final uh, note. Um, you know, just as an example, when if you if you are ever registering for an internet uh, website, for example, for your bank account, sometimes the question comes up: uh, your favorite teacher. And I think most of you, I know what name you put down. <laughs> yeah? So Thank if you. I want to hack into your account, so I'm going to do it. Yeah. So to pray for Kusum, thank you, thank you, Yogesh. Uh, thank, you. thank you all very much for your time and your lovely words. And uh, to pray for her soul and, uh, uh, you know, and, and also to empower each and every one of us to carry her spirit with us, uh, we'll recite a small prayer. Shiva Mastu Sarva Jagata Parahita Nirata Bhavantu Bhuta Gana Dosha prayantu nasam sarvatra sukhi bhavatu loka sarvatra sukhi bhavatu loka Now we will uh, uh, you know, rec send, send this recording to all of you and also put it on the Oshwal Memories Facebook page. You're welcome to share it with many people who could not be with us and let's hope that this has started something and our goal is that we want a very well written, very well researched book about Kusum Ben's life story biography so that it can go to libraries all over the world. Thank you, Jai Jinendra and Jai Krishna. Okay, bye-bye everyone.